Lord, I need you. Good morning. Are you glad that you're in the house of the Lord this morning? Do you need the Lord this morning? Amen. We all do. Uh, just give you a few announcements. First off, it's good to see all of you here this morning. I know we've got some visitors. Welcome to Tabernacle Baptist Church. We're glad that you're here with us this morning. Um, again, just a few announcements. As you came in, hopefully you saw... Uh, a lovely picture of uh, some members of Tabernacle Baptist Church that have passed on. Uh, Glenda and Rhonda have so graciously uh, donated this uh, picture of Mr. and Mrs. Precious. Uh, this is Glenn and Weta Looper, uh, this precious couple. And I'm going to read it because I can't say it better myself. Brought a lot of joy to all with their clown ministry, and they brought a lot of joy uh, to everybody that knew them. Uh, so Glenda, thank you, and Rhonda for doing that, and we, we greatly appreciate that. Um, tomorrow night, 
at 6.30 p.m. Evan, Eli, I want to see you. Bailey, I want to see you. I would say Cadence, but she's not here. But And any other people that want to learn the AV system, this don't mean you have to be back there running the sound every week, but if you want to learn how to do it and be able to help us out in a pinch, be here tomorrow night at 6.30. I won't keep you past 7.30, I promise. Uh, but we're going to do this every Monday night at 6.30 until we get everybody trained up so, so we can have some backups. Uh, Sunday, today, June 23rd, is very important in the life of this church um, God has orchestrated, God has led and guided us to start Celebrate Recovery here at Tabernacle. I ask for all of your prayers for this. Um, let me tell you when, let me tell you how I know that God has led us here. Uh, Michelle uh, wanted to do this a while back, and we talked, and um, I'll let her tell the story of how it all came to be, but she was so scared, she said, we're not going to have anybody to work. And the first time she asked for volunteers, we had 20 or 25 people up here wanting to help. Now let me tell you, that don't happen in ministries in the church. You only have two or three, but we've got plenty of workers, so be praying uh, for the workers and for everyone that's going to come to celebrate recovery tonight at 5.30, um, just constantly be in prayer for that ministry. Um, coming up, uh, our VBS is coming up, and uh, hopefully if you haven't already, and you're a leader, uh, a section leader, be sure you get me your names and t-shirt sizes today before uh, the end of the day, so we can go ahead and get everything lined up for that. Speaking of VBS, I know all of us eat soup and vegetables out of cans, don't we? That's who we are. So save those cans and bring them Wednesday night, bring them next Sunday morning, because we need those for crafts. Okay, There's a, there'll be a box in the vestibule. You can put those in and just bring them every week as you use them. Uh, just rinse them out real good and bring them. Uh, so we'll have those. And then on July uh, the 6th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., we have a family fun day here at the church. We'll have some inflatables, uh, one of which will be wet, a wet inflatable. Um, and if there's enough people show up, we can might, might can throw a couple of the adults in, in there. I won't call any names. We'll just we'll just pick and choose whoever we want to at the time, and we'll have fun. Uh, we're gonna have hamburgers and hot dogs. So invite your family and friends to this event. Bring a chair, long chair with you. Uh, if you have pop up tents, bring those so we're we're out of the sun a little bit. Uh, but we just want to come together and have have fun. We'll have some other games that we can play outside and everything. And then on the 7th is deacon nomination uh, for the new church year. So be in prayer as to who God would have you uh, to vote for to be a deacon in this church to help lead in the way that he would have us to go. If you would now look at your, uh, the back of your bulletin. Uh, still have a bunch of prayer concerns uh, most of you know now that Miss Betty Addison has passed away, so be in prayer for her family uh, as they're dealing with, with her loss here on earth. But, you know, even though she's gone on this earth, she is present with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. And we can rejoice in that, but even, even knowing that, it's still hard to lose a loved one. So be in prayer for that family. If you've got a prayer request this morning, just make it known by lifting your hand up all over the congregation. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're just so grateful that we can come into your house this morning. Father, we love you. That's why we're here, to worship you with our adoration. Father, we know that you love us. 
Father, this morning we, we look at this prayer list, and Father, while we might not know every detail of what's going on, Father, we know that everybody on this prayer list, everybody that raised their hand is in need of healing this morning. Father, we just put them, put them in your hands and ask that you just do a mighty work in their lives. Heal them, Lord, is our prayer. Father, for the ones uh, that's lost loved ones, Father, we just lift them up to you. And Father, we just pray that they feel your love and your peace like they've never experienced it before. Father, as we come here this morning, we're about to embark on a new ministry in this church that, Father, we know that you have ordained. And Father, we just pray, number one, that that you continue to guide us through this ministry, that this ministry will be what you want it to be and not what we want it to be. Father, I just ask you uh, right now, I plead with you, Lord, to, to just lift up our leaders of Celebrate Recovery here at Tabernacle. Father, that you just strengthen them, that you embolden them to speak life into helpless situations. Father, for those that will come, Father, we just pray that we can just be so overflowing with your love that they will see it, that they will feel your love through us. Father, that we can show them Jesus through our lives, that we can show them healing through our lives that they might come to a relationship, a a saving relationship with Jesus. Father, as we continue this service this morning, I just ask that you remove all the distractions from this place. Everything that we walked in with, Father, the the distractions, the, the depression, the anxiety, whatever's going on in our lives, Father, just, just remove that from our minds for the next hour, that we can focus solely on you. Father, may the message that you've given this morning just touch people, that it may change their lives, Father, may change their perspectives. Father, all this we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, I don't do this. I'm very nervous. So let's all take a deep breath together. Okay. <laughs> all right, so how did we get here? Um, no words can describe the feeling of being able to have Celebrate Recovery in, in the church here that I grew up in. Um, the church that I was saved in, the church that I have loved for so long. Just to start with a little background story, My life has had many dark spots. I chose a different path. I was lost in a world of drugs for 20 years. Methamphetamine had a grip on me. I never thought I would live past 30. But God, here I am at 52. In 2006, I had planned to take my life because I was a mess and I needed a way out. But praise God, I decided to check myself in to detox, and start my recovery journey. Just like in Psalms 116, 5 through 6, the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unweary. When I was brought low, he saved me. I was given a second chance. I worked hard in my recovery. I made my mind up. I wanted to live. I'm not going to tell you it was all good from here on out. The shame and guilt I felt was too much to handle at times. I can say I'm proud of myself today with 17 years sober. I am so grateful. Thank you. I am so grateful that God has given me a chance to live again. Fast forward to 10 years in my recovery. I lost a close friend to an overdose. I can honestly say that moment woke something up in me. I felt I had to do something. 
I prayed for God to show me what that was. I talked to my pastor at the time, Buckshot. <laughs> I talked with him, and I decided to hold NA meetings here at the church. I enjoyed knowing I could open the doors to my church to be with others just like me. In those years, I still felt like something was missing. I felt like God wanted me to do more. I had heard of Celebrate Recovery and had even talked to my current pastor about it. I had no idea how to get it started or even where to start. I had reached out to a place in Greenville but never received a response. I ended up closing down after just three years of the NA meeting I was leading in hopes of getting something else started. Folks, God has a way of showing up. Jamie calls me up one day to say, you're never going to believe this. <laughs> A lady, Miss Becky, from Fork Shoals Baptist Church, had been, had been by the church to talk to Jamie about Celebrate Recovery. The Lord just spoke to her about a church on the hill. Every time she was in Pelzer, the Lord kept speaking to her, the church on the hill, the church on the hill. The Lord had spoke to her for a while about it. She had been in Pelzer looking for the church on the hill. She had been to two other churches in Pelzer, and both had said, they weren't interested. She then realized Tabernacle sits on a hill. <laughs> Jamie didn't let her finish all she was going to say. He stopped her, and, and her thoughts was, oh no, another rejection. He tells her, you're in the right place. Amen. Ain't God good, y'all? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stop right here and thank God for allowing Tabernacle <clears throat> to be given the opportunity to have Celebrate Recovery here. I want to thank Fork Shoals for showing us how to get this thing started. I want to thank my church family for loving me, even when I was unable to love myself. When Jamie agreed to have Celebrate Recovery here, <clears throat> and he asked me to lead it, I was so unsure sure that I could or even can do this. When asked for those interested in helping to come down and meet with me that Sunday, 25 people showed up. I was worried because there's going to be people come in here with children, and the children need a place to go while the adults are getting their healing. And Bailey and Cadence came to me first thing and said, we'll help with the kids. And I was told that that's the last thing, that's the hardest thing to get. And then Miss Ann said, I'll lead it. There again, folks. God showed up. God is in this. God has this. God will lead us. Let's pray. Dear God, I just want to thank you for taking me this far in my recovery journey. Please stick with me as I am still in a work in progress. Lord, thank you for Celebrate Recovery, for allowing us to have Celebrate Recovery in your house. Lord, work through us. Let us step out of your way and you do your thing. Continue to bless us. Amen. speaks to our hymn, Stand and Sing, I Must Tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot be in my distress. Jesus, Jesus can help. 
Jamie asked me this not too long. And it really brought to my attention the importance of having your heart in the right place before you sing in church. And I try to, but this one really brought me to the right place because you're witnessing to other people even though you're singing somebody else's song and you're doing God a service. And it may not be perfect, but it's okay because the words is what people need to hear. And when I first started CR, I thought, well, I'm going to learn. I, I don't really know of anything I need to get rid of right now, but boy, was I wrong. God showed me different hurts, hang-ups, and habits. Now, hang-ups was my problem is not letting go of things that I held against other people. Was that showing my heart was in the right place? No, it wasn't. And when I, it was hard to learn this song <laughs> because I think the devil did not want me to learn this song. <laughs> but he's wrong. So I wrote it down. The scream didn't work this morning. So I wrote it down before I got here because I needed to know these words. I needed to be able to share these words. If there is anything, anxiety, I don't care what it is. Um, if you're mad at somebody, if somebody done you wrong, forget it. You're only hurting yourself. And I feel so much better. Now the devil's just got to leave me alone. And that's it. Because he, he makes it flare up every once in a while. I'm human. So is everybody else. But you know, God is right there with us at all times. And he hears our prayers. And I wanted to make sure before I sang a song of praying over somebody else, I want to make sure my heart's in the right condition. Because I want God to hear that prayer. And if there's anything bothering you today, think about the words of this song and give it to the Lord because he will fix it. I promise that. speak the name of Jesus over you in your hurting in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name cause it's all that I can do in desperation I'll seek heaven and I'll pray this for you I'll pray for your healing the circumstances will change I'll pray that the fear inside will flee In Jesus' name I pray that a breakthrough Will happen today I'll pray miracles over your life In Jesus' name In Jesus' name authority declaring blessings every promise he is faithful to keep I speak the name no grave could ever hold he is greater he is stronger he's the God of possible I pray for your healing if the circumstances will change I pray that the fear inside will flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough will happen today. I pray there is curse of over life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside will flee in Jesus' name. I 
pray for a breakthrough. What happened today? I pray me the cause of your life in Jesus' name. I pray for revival, the restoration of faith. I pray that the dead will come alive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. have your Bibles, go ahead and be turning in your Bibles to John chapter 5. Let me tell you this morning that if you don't believe that God can work through you, uh, I, I constantly hear, I can't get up and talk in front of a group of people. Uh, yeah, Michelle, you can as one of those, but listen, if you're doing what God wants you to do, you can do anything He sets in front of you, okay? Uh, so this morning, I want you to realize something about Celebrate Recovery. We've been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. Celebrate Recovery is not just for addicts or junkies or however you want to say it. It's not just for alcohol, it's not just for drugs, it's for anything that's going on in our lives that keep us from a relationship, a strong, close, healthy relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? So I want you to realize that to begin with, okay? Uh, this morning, uh, I titled the message, When We Are Broken, Listen, at some point in our lives, we all are broken. Uh, it can be physical, it can be mental, emotional, and most of the time, it's spiritual. Uh, Well-being, uh, us being the self-sufficient beings that we are, what do we try to do when we're broken? We try to fix ourselves, don't we? Now I want you to think about this. Can a car fix itself? Can an appliance fix itself? It can't. So why do we think we can fix ourselves? It don't work. See, we, we try everything under the sun... We go to this person, we talk to that person, we go to this doctor, we go to that doctor, we try crazy stuff, and we find out at the end of it all, what we do, what's the last thing that we do when we're broke? The very last thing we do, we, we, we get to a point and we say, well, everything else has failed, so I'll pray. That's the absolute backward things to do. We should pray first. That should be the very first thing that we do when we find ourselves broken. Uh, we need to pray to the one who can handle any situation that comes into our lives, and that is Jesus Christ. Now let me tell you, this ain't to say that Jesus can't and and won't work through doctors. It's not to say that he can't or, work, uh, or won't work through therapists or friends or other avenues. But what it is saying is, I trust in you enough to put my life in your hands and know that you're going to take care of me. But when we do it as a last resort, when we pray that prayer and say, God, I've exhausted everything else. Now I'm turning to you. What are we doing? We're slapping him in the face, aren't we? Because at that point, we've, we've exhausted everything else and we find ourselves in a hole and Jesus is the only way. 
But when we go to Him first, we say, I understand where I'm at and I need you. Okay? This morning, we're going to look at one of the many examples where Jesus healed people of many afflictions. Okay? Starting in John chapter 5, we're going to read verses 1 through 15. Starting in verse 1 of chapter 5, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is a in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Hebrew is called Bethesda. Having five porches, in these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Verse 4 says, For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Rise and take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him who was cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. And he answered them, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is this man that said this to you? Take up your bed and walk. But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. This morning, there's four things that I want us to look at out of this scripture. First is the need for healing. In verse 3, it says, A great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, and paralyzed. See, just like the people in this verse, we're, we're just like them, aren't we? In, in here, how many people need to be healed this morning? Now I want you to look around while everybody's got their hand up. We all need to be healed this morning, don't we? Now I want you to realize something here, that that the word that John uses here uh, for the ones that are gathered is the word anestia, which actually, if you look at the translation, is translated without strength or power. How many of you this morning are without strength and power without Jesus Christ. All of us, right? Every one of us. These people were weak physically, they were weak morally, and they definitely needed God's mercy, didn't they? Many people in our world uh, today who are sick aren't just physically sick, They're also mentally sick and emotionally sick and spiritually sick. Now, I said this many years ago talking to the youth, and and let me tell, I'm going to tell you the same thing and then I'll clarify it just a little bit. Let me tell you, all sickness, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever sickness you have comes from one place, and that is Satan. Okay. Now how, how am I saying that? Without Satan tempting Adam and Eve in the garden, we would all 
be out like Adam and Eve, right? Before they sinned. But when they sinned, it introduced all of these problems into our lives. Okay? So we need to realize that the sickness comes from Satan to begin with. That's where everything originated. Okay? Now what's interesting here, I want you to look at your, your Bibles at verse the end of verse 3, end of verse 4, and in what it says there, and I'm going to read it because I want you to realize something. So verse 3, starting with uh, waiting for, so waiting for the moving of the water, for an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water, then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water was made well from whatever disease he had. In studying this, I found it very interesting that the earliest and best Greek manuscripts of what John wrote does not have what I just read. It does not say anything, in, in the earliest and best Greek, it does not say anything about an angel stirring up the water. So when we need to look, when I look at this after reading something like that from multiple sources, I'd just take that out. Okay? They were waiting on a moving of the water. And a moving of the water could be anything. And they would get into the pool. Okay? But in verse 5, we see the man had an infirmity or a debilitating disease for how long? For 38 years. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine having some kind of problem for 38 years? That's a long time, isn't it? Anybody 38 in here? Connor, put down your hand. You're not 38. Don't wish your life away. But can you imagine how this man must have felt being paralyzed for 38 years? I'm sure this man, like, like us, had tried everything. He went to all these quack doctors and, and was taking this medication and that medication and, and doing all of these things, trying to get better. And I'm sure at the time he was laying there by the pool, he was at the end of his rope and he said, this is the last thing that I can try to, to be healed. There was nothing else to try and, and, and no one else to help this man. Now I want you to think about that. Not only was he paralyzed, he must not have had any family or any friends to stay there with him and help him into the pool. Listen, whether it be physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, whatever it is, there's something going on. Okay? Okay? And when those things are going on in our lives and, and it's really hitting hard on us, okay? How do, how do we feel? We feel as if nobody cares about us, right? We have a pity party. How many of you have pity parties? Men, go ahead and raise your hand. We all have pity parties. We get to those points in our lives where nobody cares about me, nobody's... Nobody's checking on me. Nobody's doing this. Nobody's doing that. But can I ask you something? If you're having that pity party, how many people have you let know that there's something going on in your life? Because if we don't know, we can't respond. Right? If we don't know, we can't respond. We feel as if nobody cares. Listen, we have our own spiritual blinders on. Right? Because that's what we're supposed to do as Christians, right? We're supposed to put on our spiritual blinders so that we focus on who? Let's try this again. We have our spiritual blinders on so we can focus on Jesus. I want you to say it loud. You said it right to begin with, Scott, but everybody else was like, 
But we, we're, we got these spiritual blinders on and we're supposed to be focusing on Jesus. But when our problems come in our lives, what are we doing? These are the problems in our lives over here and Jesus is up here. And when those problems come in our life and we have our pity party, what do we do? We like this, right? And that's all we're focused on. We're not focused on anything else in the world, but we need to be focusing on the one who can take the problem from our lives. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you today for who you are. Father, we just pray this morning that you will help us realize that we all have a need for healing. Father, let us look to you for that healing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. They called him Look at verses 6 and 7. We see the offer for help or the offer for healing. So we just looked at the need. Now we see an offer being made here. Jesus, we see in verse 6, knew, number one, what the man was facing. He knew what this man's condition was. He knew what plagued the man. And the Bible says for a long time, for 38 years. The key here is that Jesus knows. Let me tell you, Jesus knew what was wrong with the man. He not only knew that he was paralyzed, he knew what had paralyzed him. And he knew what the man needed to be healed. Can I tell you this morning, and everybody, most everybody raised their hand when I said, do you need healing this morning? Jesus knows your situation. He knows your situation better than you know your situation. And let me tell you, He knows how long you've been dealing with the situation and what you need to get past it. See, we're, we're very good at putting on a show, aren't we? 
Uh, let me tell you, when I was in Mississippi, it was uh, Saturday night or Sunday night one, and I was driving the bus back, back to the dormitory, and it just hit me. The stuff that, I, that I've just sort of put down deep, the grief and the pain that comes along with grief, it just hit me all at, all at once. And you're talking about a gut punch? That's what it was. But see, Jesus knew what's going on in my life. Jesus knew it was there, and He, he brought it to the forefront. And let me tell you, that night when I laid in bed, me and Jesus did some work. Is it gone? No. I don't think grief ever leaves. But let me tell you, it's a whole lot easier to deal with. It's a whole lot easier to deal with. You see, far too many of us focus way too much on our situation. You know, just like I said a while ago, we got our blinders on, right? And we're focused on that situation that we fail to hear the one who can help us when he says, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well this morning? See, and and Jesus is not going to yell out, do you want to be made well? He's going to say it in a regular voice, do you want to be made well? But we're, our, our attention is not on Jesus, so we don't never hear Him. We're focused on that situation. See, when Jesus asked the infirm man if he wanted to be made well, Jesus knew the answer before He even asked the question. He knew the man was going to say yes. So why did Jesus ask the question? Because he wanted the man to verbalize his need for a healing. You know, it's like I tell you all the time, when, when we pray and we ask to be forgiven of our sins, that God wants us to name those sins to, to all the stuff that we have bottled up that we're dealing with that we need to be healed from. He wants us to verbalize it because it becomes real at that point, and Jesus asked the man, he says, do you want to be made well? And of course the man said yes. We need to be, we need to verbalize our situation. We need to verbalize it to each other. That's what James 5.16 says, right? Therefore confess your sins, those things that you're dealing with, one to another, because the prayers of a righteous man has much power as it is working. See, we live, we don't want people to know what we're going through because they'll look at us different. Let me tell you, church, your pastor's messed up. I've got issues. And I can look all over this congregation and while I might not know your issues, can I tell you that our congregation is messed up this morning. Every one of us is messed up. We've got things that we're going through that we don't want to tell anybody in the world what's going on because they'll look at us different. We need to verbalize it. We need to love on each other and not care what people think about us. See, while the man was still focused on the healing from the pool. See, when Jesus said, do you want to be made well? The man was still laying here and the pool was there and he couldn't get in. And what did he say? I do, but I don't have anybody to help me get in the pool. But he was talking to the one who can make it all better. He was talking to the one who could take it all away. Let's pray. Father, help us to know that we need he uh, healing. And Father, help us to focus on Jesus so we can hear that offer when He says, Do you want to be made well? 
And Father, help us to answer, to verbalize, to say, yes, Lord, I want to be made well and I want to follow you and, and, and make me well today. In Jesus' name I pray. I think we got. I, th I think we just got our wires crossed up there. But hey, hey, we're messed up. Amen. Amen. Jesus, 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 the sweetest name I know, fills my every longing. He offers us healing. Next, we're gonna see the gift of healing in verses eight and nine. Uh, many of us here this morning have experienced the gift of healing. How many of you have experienced healing this morning? How many of you have... Keep your hands up if you have experienced spiritual healing this morning. If, praise God. Amen. Listen, if you are saved, you have experienced healing. If nothing else, you have experienced healing. Listen, with the same power that the pre-incarnate Jesus... The Son of God spoke everything into existence. With that same power, He told this paralytic man that was laid by a pool waiting to get in there to be healed, what did He tell him? He said, stand up, take up your bed, and start walking. Now, the Bible tells us that this man didn't know who Jesus was. So if somebody came to you and said, Get up, get your bed, and start walking. What would you do? Yeah. But what did this man do? He was in such a need that he did what he was told. Right? And that's all it takes is a word from Jesus Christ to make everything better. We see all throughout the Scriptures of Jesus healing people and never touching them. We see a lot of Jesus laying hands on people and healing them. But with just a word from Jesus, we see over and over and over again. I'm going to share a few with you this morning if you want to write down the uh, scriptures to these. It's Matthew 12, 9 through 13. Uh, Jesus tells uh, a man with a withered hand to stretch forth his hand, and, he, and when he did, his hand was restored. Matthew 8, verses 5 through 9, Jesus healed a centurion, and, and this was a, a Roman centurion that had come to Jesus, and, and his servant wasn't well, and he said, I need help. And Jesus spoke, and what happened? The servant was healed. In Mark 5, 8 through 20, we see Jesus, after he gets off a boat, he meets this man who was demon-possessed by a legion, by a ton of demons in this man. And, and listen, I'm going to tell you, I, I believe in demon possession. I believe there's people in this world today who are demon-possessed. I honestly believe that, and all you got to do is look at the way they act, they're they're this person on this day, and this person on this day, and this person on this day. But what did Jesus do? He said, come out. And what happened? They came out, went into pigs, and committed suicide in the ocean. And the one that I love the best is found in John 11, verses 38 through 44. And this is the story of Lazarus. We see, you know, that... 
You know the story. They, they sent for Jesus and He said, it's not time for me to go yet. And when He comes, Mary and Martha's there and they said, Lord, you're, you're late. Let me tell you something. The Lord is never late. He's always right on time. So He went to the tomb and they rolled back the stone and Jesus stood there and He said, Lazarus, come forth. And what happened? Lazarus was healed from death. Listen, this same Jesus has the power to heal you this morning. Let me tell you, if He can bring a man back from the dead, He can heal your depression. If He brings, can bring a man back from the dead, He can take care of your worry, your anxiety, everything that's going on in your life, He can take care of this morning. Listen, we just got to have our focus on the healer. And that healer is Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for allowing us to know our need for healing. And Father, that, that you offer healing. But Father, we're so thankful for the gift of healing. Father, just let, it all, let us always be so joyful for that gift. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. don't have to worry about y'all sitting down. It's just getting y'all to stand up, right? Okay, so we've seen the need for healing, the offer for healing, uh, the gift of healing, and then the last thing we see in verses 10 through 15 is the response to healing. In these last six verses, we see the paralytic's response to his healing, and we also see how we should respond as well. See, first we must trust in the healing, right? In verse 9, we see that after Jesus told the man to get up, the Bible says, immediately the man was made well and took up his bed 
and walked. Listen, the man didn't start to make excuses when he was told to get up and walk. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, Gina and I watch quite a bit, this, Edmund, you're not an illustration, this is just a point I'm making. So, but one of the things we watch is 600 pound life. And, and these people are 600 pounds and, and they have to lose a certain amount of weight and then they have bariatric surgery. And a lot of times the doctor will go in while these people just had surgery a few days ago. They've never, they haven't walked in so long. And he tells them, you need to get up and walk. And they refuse. They've lost hundreds, sometimes 200 pounds, and they refuse to walk because they don't believe in the healing that's already taken place. But see, this man immediately, the Bible says, got up and walked. He didn't say, you know, I hadn't walked in 38 years, so I don't know how to walk anymore. He didn't say that. He didn't say my legs aren't strong enough because I haven't walked in that long. He got up and he walked. See, we must believe that Jesus has the power to deal with our entire situation and heal us. Let me tell you, this time last year, you know where I was at. I was getting over a major thing, a major complications in my life. But not once did I not believe that Jesus had it all under control. I never thought any different. So we've got to trust that Jesus has us. Next, after we get up and walk, so to speak, we've got to do something else. We've got to go tell the story of our healing. We must not just let others see that we look better. We need to tell the story. Number one, if you are a true follower of Christ, let me tell you something. You have been healed. Just like Lazarus was brought from death to life as a follower of Christ, you have been brought from death to life, so what do you need to do? You need to go tell the story. Preacher, I can't do that. What did I tell you when I got up here to begin with? You can do anything Christ puts you, sets you out to do. You don't believe it? Look at Michelle. She's still alive. She's still breathing. She got up here and she did what Christ called her to do. She's still alive and breathing. I'm still alive and breathing. So go tell the story. If you have had a medical condition that you've been healed from, what are you to do? Go tell the story. Let me tell you something. If you've overcome addictions and have been healed, what do we do? I'm going to start over if y'all don't act like y'all are awake. Let, let's do this again. If you've overcome addictions and have been healed, what do we need to do? If you have been healed from depression, anxiety, worry, grief, loneliness, what do we do? See, now we're getting, now we're getting there. Listen, while you tell the story, and it's easy for us, just like my medical condition. I could sit here and tell you everything that happened last May. But if we fail to point people to Jesus, we've missed the mark. Let me tell you something. I can look back and I can see Jesus' hand at work all throughout that process. And I tell people... Uh, it was interesting in Mississippi, uh, one of the Mennonite ladies, we were talking, Michelle had introduced me to her, and uh, she said, uh, Michelle said, you know, 
he really shouldn't be here. And she sort of looked at me and I started telling her my story and she just burst into tears. She said, isn't it amazing how Jesus works? But we have to tell people the story. Listen, we've got to tell them the story and we've got to point them to Jesus. Once the healing comes, we must heed the words that Jesus told the man. He said, see, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Listen, we're smart enough to know that not all disease is a consequence of our sin. Okay? It's a consequence of sin, but not of our sin. Okay? We do, however, know that sin has disastrous consequences. We also see that disease and our emotional and our mental states may be directly tied to our moral condition. Okay? Listen to what James says in James 5.15. It says, And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. And then in 1 Corinthians uh, 11 verses, chapter 11 verses 29 and 30, this is talking about examining ourselves before we partake in the Lord's Supper. And this is what Paul writes. He said, For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep, or many die. Listen, we've got, to, we've got to constantly be worried about our sin problem that we have. And we've got to constantly confess those sins and repent and turn back to Jesus. So at the end of all this message, what does this tell us? One, that we're in need of healing. Right? And, and we all agree with that. So much so that we should be praying for healing. And we need to be listening to that all, for that offer of healing from the one who can heal us. We must accept the healing knowing full well that Jesus has healed us and turn our back on that from which we were healed and to focus on Him and not the situation, not the problem. We must tell our story and lead others to a place of healing, and that's in a relationship with Jesus Christ. This morning, I'm going to do the invitation time just a little bit different after the prayer. So I, I want you to just bear with me. The Lord put this on my heart, and when the Lord does something, I, I'm, going, I'm going to listen. I've done a not, enough of not listening to Him, so... We're going to listen to Him. So let's bow our heads in, in prayer. Father, as we come to You at the close of this service, Father, I just pray that each one of us will be attentive to Your call that You put on our lives, that we will, that we will respond the way that you would have us to respond this morning. Father, we ask all this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you all stand to your feet for me? Now I want you to listen very closely to me this morning. And I know we have a tendency, you know, preachers have done this for, for many, many years. No, I want you to sit back down. I'm sorry. We're just, we're just giving you some exercise this morning. But I do want you to, I want you to uh, bow your head and close your eyes. And I know, I know this ain't a fun thing, but I just want everybody to do this because this is going to show us all something very special here in just a minute. And I want you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed until I tell you to look up front at me, okay? See, we all struggle with many different things. We've all been healed of many different things. 
This morning, I'm going to ask you if you have dealt with or currently dealing with any of these situations, I want you to stand up. And I want you, as you stand up, just reach up and grab the pew in front of you with your head bowed and your eyes closed. I would just grab that pew in front of you and I want you to just stand up, okay? Have you, have you dealt with depression? If you're dealing with or have dealt with depression, I just want you to stand up, keep your eyes closed and your head down. Have you dealt with anxiety or worry? How about grief? Are we dealing with grief this morning? I can tell you I deal with grief almost every day. How about addictions? Are you addicted to food? Are you addicted to shopping? Are you addicted to media as in your cell phones? You, you, you find yourself on your cell phone so, so many times. Are you addicted to pornography? Gambling? Do you have a problem with anger or hate? Now what I want you to do is just, if you, if, you, if you have any other issues that you're dealing with, I want you to stand up. That I didn't, that I didn't, bang. Okay, what I want you to do this morning, I want you to look at me. And I want you to look around. Are we not all in the same boat, church? We're all in the same boat. We've got hurts, right? We've got habits, don't we? We've got habits that are not godly. They're sinful. And we've got hang-ups. You know, when I told you that your prep pastor's messed up and I told you you're messed up, we all got hang-ups too that we need to deal with. This is an invitation, okay, for, for all of those that need to come get on the altar to come and pray this morning. So y'all y'all come, get on the altar, get on the on the pews here. If you can't get on the altar, you can do business with, with God right where you're at. But there's something about being at His altar. What a lovely sight. Just keep coming. We're all family. We love each other. Father, as we come to you this morning as your children, Father, we all are hurting. We all need healing. And Father, just like that woman that reached out and touched your garment, we're, we're reaching, but Father, we, all we need to do is ask. And Father, we know that you will come to us that you will help us, that you will heal us, that you will take all these situations that's going on in our lives and you will make them better. Father, let us keep our focus on you with all the distractions that we have in this world. We need, to, we need you to help us push them, our, push them away, push them out of our sight so that we can focus on you from the time we get up till the time we go to bed. Each day of the week, each day of the month, each day of the year, that we can draw closer to you, that we can be your true disciples and love on people as you bring them into our lives. So that we can be that beacon of hope that they see Jesus working in us.
Father, all this we ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen.